Good morning, everybody. Nice to be back with you. Yeah. And worship with you today. Okay, we're going to begin with Refresh My Heart, which is on a warm day, really appropriate. <laughs> Refresh My Heart. Refresh my heart, Lord, renew my love, pour your spirit into my darkness with that and 
words of wisdom that hopefully we can hear in this story. So let's start as we would normally do with sharing the peace. Let me say to you, may the peace of God and the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also we encourage you to stand, wave at somebody to share that. If you're at home, send somebody a text message, whatever that may be, as we share that peace. Um, around. John, you need to stay in your seat, mate. <laughs> We've got to be careful what we're doing here. <laughs> One of the really important things is that this place remains a safe place for us to be at, which means we do need to follow some of those little uh, guidelines around um, face mask wearing as well as um, distancing. So in that way we can welcome people in as they feel comfortable and able to join us. But let's start with our call to worship. Let us gather and turn, turn towards the light. Let us gather and turn, turn towards each other. Let us gather and turn, turn towards God. And be reborn, renewed and renamed as God's children. Let's stand and sing together. To God be the glory.
For centuries, the church has tried to filter your life through different lenses, through different traditions, through different understandings of what it means to be saved. Times and understandings have changed. And yet still the church does not always find ways to shine your light in ways that help others to know you. Forgive us, Lord. We are fickle people, slow to learn and even slower to change. Help us to turn back to the light that shines in Jesus, that guides our way. Forgive us, Lord, for hiding the light in doctrine and theology and failing to let the light shine brightly for all people. Lord, help us to choose to follow the light wherever it may lead us and to share the light with all people. So be it. Amen. So we hear the good news that God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. In Jesus Christ, therefore, we are forgiven. And what can we say to that but thanks, thanks be to be to God. God. Now let's listen to our reading from John. Our reading this morning is John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, We speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Hello and good morning to all, and especially good morning to our families who are joining us online. Um, Today we're going to play a game together. 
everyone here is included. And those who are online, if they'd like to put in their guesses, can put them in the chat as well. Except we're not chatting, remember that. Oh. We're recording. And there's no comments on YouTube, is there? No. Uh, ignore all of that then. <laughs> and feel free to text them to me later in the week, your guesses. So we're going to play Guess Who, Myron Beanie's edition. So we've had people from the church email in their baby photos along with a photo of them as an adult. And we're going to try and guess together who we think it is. Does that make sense? Excellent. So we've got our first one. Just call it out if you think you know it. Sorry? Zach? No, but good guess, John. No? Not Joe Petzer? I know. So. Yeah, uh, Jay knows. <laughs> Any last guesses and then we'll throw to Jay? Excellent. It is indeed Shaz. Next up here. Yes! Well, well done, done, Josh! It is indeed Alison. Th that was very quick. There she is in adult form. Paul, no, no. There's no family groupings. I've tried to make this difficult. Keep guessing. Bruce? No, no, but nice try. Was that you, Peter? Yes. Good effort. Roger? No, no. R wrong gender, yes? Yep. Yeah, wrong gender. <laughs> Jay? No, no. Uh, but close to Jay. Sorry? No, not that close. <laughs> Somewhere between Jay and me. No. Kelly? Kelly. Correct. Kelly. Well done, Josh. That is Kelly. Any guesses? They've recently joined the church. Pardon? No, not quite, but good guess. Nope, but good guess. Yes. Well done, Josh. It is indeed lucky. Any guesses? Josh. Josh, you're You're good. doing remarkably well. <laughs> yes, it is indeed Carol. Did you hack my email? No, no. <laughs> this is very impressive. Okay, so we're looking for the baby on the right-hand side, not the left. On the left is their sister. Well done to Carol. Carol guessed Marg. It is indeed Marg and her sister. We're looking at the baby in the middle between the two uh, women. What was that, sorry? Jeff, no, but good guess. It is indeed a male. Ah, I see Bruce's finger pointing. Bruce indeed, indeed did correctly guess. It is John Lever. <laughs> the person on the far right in the blue circle. Sorry? Paul, no, but good guess. Well done, Alison. It is indeed Bruce. <laughs> Any guesses? Who said that? Well done, John. <laughs> yes, it is indeed me. And that concludes our game of Guess Who. You all did very well. Josh, you indeed win. Air high five. And Kelly did it exceedingly well as well. She got six out of the eight. So Kelly and Josh must be on some similar wavelength. Now, these baby photos, they don't much look like the current pictures, do they? You know, the people that we see in baby form don't look the same in adult form. And we don't expect these people to go back to being babies, right? That would just be very strange. In our gospel story today, someone was confused because he heard Jesus say that he should be born again. There was a man named Nicodemus, and he worked for the church. He had heard about Jesus and wanted to ask him some questions about who he was and what he was doing. He came to Jesus at night time and started asking him how he was doing all the things that Jesus was doing. Jesus told Nicodemus that he needed to be born again. And Nicodemus had a hard time understanding that. I think I would too. 
Was he supposed to shrink down and become like a tiny baby all over again? How could that even happen? Jesus explained that being born again was a different kind of birth. We have physical bodies and we have physical birth. And, but being born again happens through the Spirit of God. I'm sure it would have taken some time for Nicodemus to figure this out, but I bet he would have been pretty excited when he did. Jesus meant that this faith gives us new life. We become a new creation, a new special kind of human. And do you know what we have to do to receive this? All we have to do is to believe it and trust in God. And that is our story for today. Thank you, Zach. Wonderful to see all those different people. We're going to sing together now the great love of God. This morning we hear the words, you must be born again. Now I think it's impossible for anyone now to hear these words as they were originally spoken by Jesus or heard by Nicodemus, the Jewish leader who sought out Jesus under the cover of darkness, embarrassed or fearful of others knowing about his interest in this new teaching. Now, for many of us, those words being born again can conjure up images of someone with a sandwich board or standing on a soapbox in a busy market or city square, proclaiming a call to repentance using all the usual fire of fires of hell and damnation words while his helpers hand out tracts to reluctant shoppers. We've all met people who have no qualms about describing themselves as born-again Christians, with all that implies about others being of lesser status and not real Christians at all. Now, I can't remember whether I've told you this story, and if I have, I apologise. It's how long I've been here. We might recycle stories. But I had an experience like that once. It was way before I was training to be a minister and I was helping out at a dance shop at a studio where Bruce and I were dancing at. A person came into the shop for something and somehow, I can't remember the details, but somehow the conversation got into a place where I shared that I was a Christian. He immediately asked, was I born again and did I speak in tongues? Because if I, well, that, that was it. Um, when I answered that I didn't speak in tongues, I was told I was not a Christian then. I don't think he appreciated the fact that I then quoted back at him 1 Corinthians 12, saying that speaking in tongues is but one of the gifts of the Spirit and not an essential one. 
he didn't hang around to buy anything and um, if that was really what he was doing. So we know what it's like to be claimed. You have to be born again. You have to fit this mould or else you're not Christian. I don't think that's what Jesus is telling us today. The story that we read today is told to expand some of the grand themes that are never very far from the surface in John's Gospel. But John is writing for a particular reason. These themes are light and darkness, life and death, seeing and not seeing, the identity of Jesus and the unpredictable movement of the Spirit. Nevertheless, it is also the story of one person and his quest for truth. Jesus' response is tailored to Nicodemus' statement with its implied question, have you really come from God and can we trust what you say? As it is so often in John's Gospel, Nicodemus' opening greeting and affirmation about Jesus is ignored. Or at least we're not told if there's any other conversation about that. Jesus doesn't respond directly but goes straight to the heart of the issue. Entry into the kingdom or the reign of God can only come through birth from above. This is the only context where John speaks of the kingdom of God. Mostly he uses the parallel term eternal life to speak of what we are given, not just in and beyond death, but also here, now in the here and now. It's characteristic of John's dialogue that Jesus' conversation partner misunderstands and interprets his meaning on a literal, material level. And we're going to see that again next week. And so it is with Nicodemus. He assumes that Jesus is speaking of rebirth, being born again, which, as he points out, is absurd if taken literally. Jesus then goes on to explain his meaning. Jesus clarifies that being born from above does not mean again, but rather of water and spirit, making it plain that he is not speaking of physical but spiritual birth. And the emphasis here is on the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit as the giver of life eternal as well as physical. Last week I quoted from Dorothy Lee, and as I said, um, she's an ex well, a well-known authority on John. So she explores this idea a little bit more around spiritual birth. Dorothy says, Jesus emphasizes the distinction between the spiritual and the phys between physical and spiritual birth and the mysterious presence and working of the spirit. But note that physical birth is also the work of the Spirit, and the contrast is not a negative one. The point is that another kind of birth is needed for the entry into eternal life, not something to be gained by our own efforts, but by the miraculous labour of the divine Spirit. Nicodemus' response is a helpless, ineffective one. How can these things be, he says, and Jesus is astonished at the lack of understanding in one who spends his life studying the Old Testament scriptures. After this, Nicodemus disappears from the narrative, unable to respond either way. This will not be the end of his story. Eventually, he will come into the open with his faith, taking the risk alongside that with Joseph of Arimathea in burying Jesus. Some interesting comments there by Dorothy. So we have this complicated theological ideas around birth, light, water, spirit. But underneath all of that complicated theology is the simple but profound statement that is found in God, in John's Gospel. It comes to the very heart. Christian good news. God loved the world so much that he gave. The initiative comes from God. The motivation is love and the intention is not to condemn but to rescue. 
This is where the wisdom lies. It is the wisdom we find hard to see at times or even to hear. It is depicted in the incarnation and the cross. Both are vivid symbols of the divine love and the divine embrace of a fallen world. God's longing for us is not condemnation, but salvation. If we turn away from this wisdom, run from the light of Jesus, we turn away from the very source of life and light and condemn ourselves to death and darkness. The good news in this story is that a fresh start is always possible, no matter how old we are or how set in our ways we are. The tricky bit is having to let go of all that is safe and familiar in order to benefit from the complete system reboot or rebirth that God's spirit wants to accomplish in us. And this doesn't happen just once. But it happens whenever we get clogged up with so much religious certainty that we lose sight of what really matters. Turning to the light again and again in a continuous process of spiritual helotropism. There's a new word for you. Sorry, helotropism. In other words, growing towards the light. Like sunflowers facing the sun as it rises in the east, following it's all its way around to its depth in the west. Hopefully that was east to west for you because it was west to east for me. In an age where religion can be too often identified with narrow extremism and violence, it's a small wonder that many, just like Nicodemus, can be reluctant to admit to an interest in matters of faith. In a world that can be dominated by division and fear, we need more than ever to be brave enough to come out into the light, joining people of all faiths and none who do what is true as a sure sign of God's presence within the world today. Hopefully, we can come out into the light and deal with that. Let's sing together. Living in the light.
moment, have a moment to take up our offering. Colin, I might ask you today. This is what you will call on people to take up the offering. <laughs> I'm sure you can do everybody with just one. Thank you, Colin. Wonderful. side in here. But, um, so we will recognise our blessing in the backpacks, but families, stuff will be coming your way. Something special for that. Our rosters, I know it's a little confusing and who knows what's happening, but if you're able to help at all, please, there are forms on the table outside and if you can pop them into the box with the yellow lid, that would be greatly appreciated. Heather Walsh asked me to um, let you know that the Caulfield Rotary Club, the Australia Day Council, Daniel Sun and Cafe Omina have provided, uh, will provide, have will, my English was wonderful there, provide a free brunch on Australia Day morning. Uh, you do need to book though, and if you've got your pew sheet with you, the link on the try booking is there. So that's obviously happening on Wednesday, um, sometime in the morning, just down locally. Are there any joys and concerns that people would like to share? Doug. Mm. Is that a response to, is that with COVID or is it just with COVID? Yeah. Yep. yep. Let's continue to keep Stuart uh, at the Gold Coast ICU in our prayers. Other joys, concerns that people may want? Jane. Was it? Um, 
Do you know a name? Do you want us to say a name? Or we'll just say, for those who have lost family. Not a problem. Joy is, um, John's back after being caught with the bug. Um, so we do have, we've got probably about four or five of our people who are currently with COVID. Um, so it's just one of those things that is out there. We need to be aware and super vigilant, whatever, look after ourselves, um, get boosted if we can and uh, be careful. But we think of all those who are isolating or who are ill with COVID indeed. And for Tonga, absolutely for Tonga. Um, one of the beautiful things I think I've seen in every news thing about Tonga are always talking about how people are praying and how they believe God is there and such a community that is so steeped in their belief and their trust in God. It's, it's beautiful to see, absolutely. Let's have a little look of our prayers that we've got. So we uh, happy birthday to our January people. We continue to pray for Anne and her family, for Mark, and as I said, those who have contracted COVID or who are isolating, those we know, those we hear about. We've been asked to pray today on the Presbytery for the Uniting Aboriginal and Island Christian Congress. And today is a day that uh, we used some of their resources last week, but is sometimes set aside as a day of thinking about First and Second Peoples um, prior to Australia Day. So that's uh, in there as well. And then the Assembly, of course, have asked us to pray for the people of Tonga and the Pacific who are impacted by the tsunami and the Tongan community here in Australia, many of who have not been able to speak to their relatives for four or five days, though we're starting to hear contact happening now. Uh, as I said, news waiting from loved ones. Those working in aged care amid the enormous challenges posed by the spread of Omicron. And for the communities who will mark a day of mourning in worship this Sunday, we give thanks for the resilience and survival of Australia's first people and we pray for the work of justice, truth-telling and healing. So knowing that God has been amongst all of those words and God sits in praying of healing. Let me lead you in some prayers, which we'll stop at a moment and pray some individual ones as well. Let us pray. Lord, the light of your love shines brightly still in the world today, shining into the darkest places and bringing your love where it is sorely needed. People use the darkness to create fear and confusion cause mischief and trouble. Lord, may your light shine into their darkness and reveal its falseness. People hide in the dark because they are afraid and because they are not safe to live in the light. Lord, may your light shine into their darkness and bring comfort. People manipulate your light to control and gain power. Lord, may your true light shine into their darkness and reveal their true nature. Lord, may your light shine brightly for all to see and to turn to. And Lord, we bring particularly those thoughts and conversations that we have just had. Pray for Stuart. We pray for those and, and healing for Stuart, healing for our people who have COVID. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of family. We pray for all who are doing things front and back lines to keep us ticking over as best we can at this time. We pray for our first peoples. We pray for people of Tonga. Lord, may we be light bearers in a world that loves darkness and be bold and brave in shining your light wherever it is needed. 
We do that, Lord, by praying together. So let us pray the others the prayer that you gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing together. What a story. Yeah.